Welcome. I love it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. It is my honor, my pleasure to welcome from Jersey City, New Jersey. Yes. Uh, Maureen Walliser. Good morning, Steve. Who is uh, Vice President, uh, Strategic Planning, Hudson Community Enterprises, a great organization that is uh, part of our initiative that is being done with the Kessler Foundation. You employ people with disabilities. You do very important work. And start at when? When was your organization started? 1957. With an eye toward? Employment. Okay, but, what? You were, but you, a niche, right? right? A niche that was not being dealt with. And people with disabilities not being addressed. Why did you know, why did the organization know that people with disabilities being ignored and had so much to contribute? How did you know that? If you spend time with a person with a disability and you have a conversation, you will be very impressed. Um, people with disabilities are from all over. They cross every ethnic group. They come from small cities, large cities. Um, they have a broad range of interest and specifically skills. Mm. And we saw the high unemployment rate of persons with disabilities. How high? Um, up, up to about 70%. What? Seven out of 10 people with disabilities are not working. Seven out of 10. Correct. And in the best of times, it's hard to find a job for anyone. Yes. And in the worst of times, especially for a person with a disability, it's even harder. So our organization focused on employment since 1957. Although we've changed a bit in the way we did that, in that about six years ago, we were only focusing on job placement in the private sector. So it was only, you were getting people with disabilities placed in private sector businesses? Correct. Go ahead, how did that change? Well, about six years ago, six or seven years ago, when the economy really went into a crisis mode. In 2008-ish? Uh, Seven-ish was it. when we started. We said, this is really difficult. We can't find jobs. So we began to focus on job creation. And what we did is that we identified a range of business lines that we felt offered opportunity. So we tried to find some initial financing to get into some of these businesses, and that was very difficult. Oh, wait, what are we looking at right now? Some of the video we're looking at right now. That's actually your operation? Yes, that's actually okay. someone scanning documents for a corporation. So document scanning. Okay. Correct. Okay. Which is an important part of the whole portfolio of jobs. Well, go ahead. I, I, t I digress, I'm sorry. So you're, you're thinking about job opportunities, lines of businesses that could be created, right? Correct. Go ahead. Correct. And in 2006 and 2007, when we began to look at these lines of business, uh, there was a whole thing going on with identity theft. Right. Um, people were starting to think even greener than they used to. People were drowning in paper. And we said, hey, this seems like a really viable area that we could get involved in. So we started the shredding business. We got a truck. We took the truck on the road. And we began to do shredding at corporation sites. Right. And doing so, we got a customer base that coincidentally, a year later, when we had funding for the document scanning business, we could also knock at their door. They knew us, they knew the quality of our work. Right. So hence, we picked up a lot of customers from that initial group of 50. The scanning business in its first year employed about 20 people. And now, six years later, it employs 125 people. Amazing. And after the scanning business, we said, we, we, we need to keep looking for another business line. So Very entrepreneurial. Very entrepreneurial. Uh, we identified the whole area of bu building management services. Building management services. Correct. And by the way, so hold on, I want to be clear. Yes. So all of these jobs that we're talking about being filled by people with? Disabilities. disabilities. So we identified the area of building management services and we started the business and that was also six years ago. And today that business employs 150 people. Huh. So we have a total of about 200, 300 people with disabilities and I'm really happy that we've been able to get a lot of work through the state of New Jersey. Right. Uh, New Jersey has something called a state use law which sets aside certain products and services to be done by persons with disabilities because the state recognizes the high unemployment rate. 
connect back because you were saying before we got on the air. Um, by the way, I mistook your accent. I thought it was a Boston accent. It's actually from Jersey City. That's why I, I was teasing it. about that. It's amazing. I love it. That's never happened in my life. Okay, and I thought you might have been a Red Sox fan, but you know, yeah. you're a Yankee fan, so I, it's, everything's good. Uh, I digress. But here's the thing that's interesting: the Kessler Foundation connection. You were saying, "Hey, we have these great ideas at our nonprofit." But the question about where you get the dollars to start these, how do you describe those businesses? Social enterprise businesses. Okay, that a not-for-profit would start these social enterprise businesses that would not look to just make money for the sake of making money, but to be driven, those dollars be driven back into the nonprofit, right? Correct. And the Kessler Foundation did what? The first time we approached them for a grant, uh, we received a $100,000 grant and we used that to start the document imaging business. Right. Um, a year later, we were ready to expand the business and being very entrepreneurial, we again went back to the Kessler <laughs> Foundation. So they gave us a second grant. Amazing. Um, three years later, we wanted to expand the business again and we wanted to add a digital mailroom component and we went back to the Kessler Foundation. They've supported us, Steve, for I guess, five grants, and right. they've probably given us close to a million dollars. Now let's talk about the payoff, the impact that all this has had on the approximately 300 people with disabilities. What impact has it had on them, and also the impact they have had on society? Tremendous impact. I guess very basic is the fact that these 300 individuals last year earned over six million dollars in wages. <laughs> six million dollars. Six million dollars in wages. From that six million dollars, they helped the federal government and the state government and their local government through the taxes that they paid. Paying taxes. Correct. Um, Contributing it, to the economy. Exactly. Creating other jobs because they're contributing to the economy. Right. And also, individuals with disabilities do what we do. They shop, they eat out. So they support the local businesses in their community. It's a win-win situation. And one more thing, a lot of individuals with disabilities were collecting Social Security disability right. prior to coming into our businesses. And now no longer. And now no Which longer. Which means no longer taking those dollars from taxpayers through the government. By the way, real quick, before I let you go, the high school initiative. Oh, we have a program for high school students. We've had it for 20 years. Um, basically, it's to encourage youth with disabilities to consider what they want to do when they leave high school in terms of employment. So our program is a four-year program. Students come to us in their freshman year, and they're with us freshman year through senior year. Half day they attend their host high school for the academics, and the other half day they're with us. But they're not with us in our building. We work with about 15 companies in the area and the students are based in groups of seven at those different businesses with the intent that they will become aware of careers in those mm -hmm. industries, explore those jobs, and receive some basic training in those jobs so that the day they graduate, they will have a goal in terms of employment. How much do you love what you do? I love it. Because? Working with individuals with disabilities, seeing their ability to get a job, to advance in employment, that's what it's all about. It is, isn't it? You meet anyone who does not work. You meet someone who works. Mm -hmm. You go to a party, Steve, the first question you're asked is, what do you do for, well, not you, because everyone knows what you do, but well, what, what do you do well, for a living? Yeah, the greatest question is not just what you do, but when people are able to talk about what they do and how much they love what they do. Correct. And making a difference. Well, you are making a difference. Kessler's making a difference, but the people who you're helping are making a difference. It's people with disabilities, and it's a great thing. By the way, the website for uh, Hudson Community Enterprise has um, been up the entire program. Go on the site. Find out what they're doing. Um, that's why we're doing the series. That's so, wonderful. Well, we're all in this thing together. And by the way, you are from Jersey City, proud from Jersey City. Your kids make fun of you because <laughs> of your accent. You told me that, right? That's correct. <laughs> and um, you've done very well being with us. Thank you so much, Maureen. We appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate Glad it. Glad to be partners. Have a good day. Stay with us one-on-one. -on -one. We'll be right back right after this.